You see me? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for tuning back in once again for another episode of Logic's View. Joining us today, we got special guest Chuck Rashire coming in. We're going to try to get him in on the live stream. But if not, we go. We got them by speakerphone. Chuck, can you you there, Chuck? I hear you now. I'm just All right, all right. I got you set up there. Hopefully, hopefully the guest can hear you. Uh oh, he hung up. All right, let's see. There he is. There. You are. Live from Studio testing, A, testing. coming at you. All right. All right. How you doing today, brother? Hey, live from Studio A, here's Logic and Reason coming at you, black and white, nothing but the truth. Can you How hear me? That? Can you hear me, Chuck? I hear you perfect. All right, I hear you me. loud and clear. All right. All right. Good. Can so our we, guests got a few, hear us? We, we got a few things we want to discuss today for sure. And uh, it's always a lot going on. So uh, I'm going to let Chuck go ahead and uh, start off and uh, get it going. Wow. Well, thanks, Logic. Uh, great to be back uh, with Logic and Reason, the truth in black and white. And that's what we're after. And we're glad that you could join us. Those of us who are joining us tonight on a short notice. But uh, we've got a lot to pack in. And we've got a lot to try to put us in in this short short time. So let's start with what the weekend was. We're going to talk about politics around Michigan. And great group of people in Lansing and also a, a group in, in Grand Rapids. And we'll let Logic talk about the Grand Rapids group. I'll talk about the Lansing group. And what a better way to uh, to start the Saturday was a celebration of St. Patrick's Day than, than a group of patriots, people that are committed to bringing the truth. And this group on Saturday did exactly that. We met at the uh, MIGOP building, and we were focused on that because we want, it, we want them to know that there are still patriots out there that we don't approve with that fake MIGOP group. We don't approve in any which way. Christina Caroma is still the, the chair of our group and uh, we will rec recognize her. She's she All she wants is nothing but the truth and so help her God. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're tired of being stomped. We're tired of being oppressed and uh, as impressed people. And so we see this now, whether it's black and white, we see what they're doing. They want to push us down. They want to put us under control. And on Saturday, we saw speakers like Representative Steve Carl. Kudos to Steve coming out with talking about unity. He's talking about unity, not unity and rolling over, but unity and purpose. And I actually absolutely agree with him on that. We are unity and purpose, but that doesn't mean we're going to roll over and get sand kicked in our face. We have differences of opinion. Yes, we do. But we have our purpose is still on Republican values. Make no mistake about it. The Republican values we talk about are in the platform. The Republican platform has two main ones, the Bible and the Constitution. And we adhere to that strongly. And those guys want to throw that Constitution out. Many of them don't believe that Constitution. Oh, they will tell you they do. But when it comes down to the fact that they want to throw delegates off, that's not constitutional. That is not what we're talking about. So on Saturday, we saw over 100 people, probably about 150 people there. Uh, speakers like uh, Representative Steve Carr, uh, speakers like um, Ken Beyer. Ken has done a number of these videos. Um, he's really great at that. Another one, Dan Bonamy, the vice chair under Christina, uh, when they kicked off Melinda. Uh, the best thing to do was kicking Melinda Pago out because I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way she should be around any quasi government. And if I was the people up in her district, I would take I would look at it seriously and, and boot her off as a clerk as well for a lot of reasons. We won't even get into that today. But there are other speakers that spoke. Um, um, Lori Skeebel and Phil O'Halloran talking about how they were uh, how they were wrong, got thrown off of the um, um Oakland County by Vance Patrick. Totally wrong. Why? Because he disagreed with them? Come on, Vance, you know better than that. This is having, if we have a difference of opinion, discuss those, but don't throw people off because they just don't agree with you. That's wrong. But Lori and Phil, uh, of course, have been active in the in the party. And Lori, of course, working for the MIGOP under Christina. And she, along with another person, were wrong. They were threatened. Their lives were threatened. The FBI is in on that. 
and uh, to stop them. And those people that did it, I just hope and pray that you get your due reward because I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing like it. This whole thing about what they're doing, that's as bad as the mafia threatening. I mean, what's next? Lynching? What are we going to do? Start, start, you know, breaking people's legs and stuff like that. Sounds crazy. Is it? I don't know. I see what they're doing. When you threaten people's lives over politics, there's something wrong. So Lori was there. Um, uh, Phil O'Halloran was there. Brennan, uh, Braden Jacobazzi was there, gave a great speech. I really commend him on that. Um, and if I forgot anybody, um, I'm sorry. Oh, Kim Harris and Sabrina Pritchett. I don't know, Pritchett Evans, if you, they, they spoke about what was really going on down in Kalamazoo. And I'm telling you right now, uh, there's a, a case right there with DePerno, and I mentioned him on Saturday. Uh, DePerno, an emphasis on the no, um, has really been taking him to task. And so we had a great time. But the next part of this is, and I'll leave it at that, is the next part is to take it from a plan, a rally, to action. Putting that those action plans in place and executing them out correctly. Growing, being able to grow in a five-fold manner. Looking at a compounding interest. We have over 100, 100 say 150 people. We, we multiply that times five, easily have 1,000 people. And you can say, well, that math doesn't add up. Yeah, well, I plan big things. I don't plan in small things. So that we'll leave it at that. It was a great rally, uh, two hours long. And um, we expected someone to throw us off the property. In fact, we kind of wanted that because then that would tell us who owns the property. And we knew nobody did, really is. It's not been decided. That's Christina's whole thing. She wanted to find out who owns that property. Why? Because they were claiming some tax exemptions. They were doing all kinds of stuff. In other words, funny money going on, folks. It's that simple. It's as simple as I can put it without getting into, into the uh, nitty gritty. It's funny money, transferring money. And uh, Christina called them out on it and they didn't like it. So uh, logic, uh, that's really kind of a summary. I didn't get into all the detail. Hope that helps the people that are listening. Yeah, buddy, for sure, for sure. Uh, sound like it was a nice event, a lot going on. Uh, so what was the, to... uh... Go ahead. I was just going to ask, what, uh, what was the overall purpose of the... Uh, whole purpose of the get oh, the gathering thank thank you thank you thank you yeah uh what it was was the 24 counties were disenfranchised in other words pete hookster the great the great compromiser or the great unifier i should say was going to take and unify this party he's done anything but that i call him out because if he's a unifier pete you got to take and unify that means everybody is equal but they didn't they didn't want these 24 counties why because the 24 counties opposed them. They didn't want the 24 counties at all, and they disenfranchised them. That means they're going to go it alone. How do you win when you only got part of a team? Imagine a soccer team that has 11 players trying to win with 10 fielders or nine fielders or eight. You can't. You're not going to win. So how do they expect to win? They're going to blame it on us. No, you're not. We will not let you blame any losses because – they have not done nothing but divide. They have done nothing but to take and, and go after Christina long before she even was appointed or, or elected. They were had plans to go after her. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is wrong. And there's nothing wrong. You might say this or that about her. Whether she's the best leader or not, doesn't matter. She's our leader. We elected her and we have to stand behind her. Can you imagine me as a coach, my players not standing behind me, even though I'm out there busting my butt? Um yeah, she was busting her butt, and she was busting her butt against who? Against the people that are corrupt, against this dark money. They don't think anything about accepting dark money. And, Logic, you know that whole thing because you had that person on your show that said, well, there's nothing wrong with dark money as long as it's used for good. No, good old Tammy Faye. Tammy was wrong, and so are they. So I got to get, I got to move into something that goes straight with this. <laughs> Today we received – some criticism about only 40 people there from somebody named Patricia Johnson. I have no clue who she is, but I ragged on her pretty hard. Why? Well, Cause that's what they want to do. They want to try to, to uh, belittle and demean. That's the whole focus. Well, I got news for it. There were a lot more than 40 people. They had 40, we had 150 and that's the only the start. We are coming at them, make no mistake. But she had, she had the audacity to make that. And I kind of got into her shorts a little bit. I actually quoted from Martin Luther King and, most people like to talk about Martin Luther King about his, I got a dream. Ah, but I got one better. 
Martin Luther King became the president of the Montgomery Improvement Association. And when he did that, okay, he was the president of that. And when he did it, um, he basically gave a speech. And in that speech, he said, we have no alternative but to protest. For many, uh, for many years, we have shown an amazing patience. We have given we have given our white brothers the feeling that we liked the way we were being mistreated. But we come here tonight to be served, to be saved from that patient. I got to see if I read it. That makes us patient with anything less than freedom and justice. You get that? Anything less than freedom and justice. What he's saying is that we're not patient anymore and we're not going to settle for anything less than that. Freedom and justice. That's exactly where we all are. It is not a black and white issue. It's good versus evil. And we have to stand against this evil. Make it no mistake. These people have no intent of being unified. Norm Schenkel last week alone in a meeting had told people that you're either with us or you're against us. Well, wait a minute. They don't want to compromise. They have, have no, they're just as bad as the Democrats. In fact, they are. I like to call them riggers. What does that mean? Instead of rhinos, rhinos are, riggers are go one step further. They're rhino infected grassroots. Get it? Rigger. R I G R. Rhino infected grassroots, meaning that these people are given up. They're given, they're getting bought and out is what are getting bought is what they're doing. Not bought and out. That's poor English. Sorry. They're getting bought and it's all about them. And we can see this across the board. They start out like grassroots, like true grassroots, but they become contaminated. And it's time we started calling these people out. The Andy Shebos, the Bree Morgan. Version. Definitely. All right. Let me. Uh, yep. Go ahead. Let me get it. Get in here. You you going in on them, boy? You going in? We all upset. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta we gotta we gotta get organized and get structured and figure out what we gonna do about this crap, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Saturday yes, was sir. a nice event as well, and uh, Saturday was a nice event. We was we were over in Grand Rapids. I uploaded the interview that me and Christina had. Uh after the uh event i also have her speech that i'm gonna be working on uploading as well uh from the event you know and i got a couple other interviews that i got from the event as well but it, it went real nice you know and you know you can really i asked christina some personal questions in the interview where uh you know what i'm saying to see where she at after all this stuff it's been a lot of commotion it's a lot of wear and tear on all of us so you know what i'm saying we we still standing strong with christina the event went real nice and stay tuned for the uh stay tuned for the updates on that thank you uh terry you know i'm getting back in my rhythm i'm gonna be trying to do uh daily daily episodes got tons of interviews available and lined up got tons of uh tons of stuff we working on behind the scenes the new website is uh logicsview.com www.logicsview.com uh tomorrow we're gonna have sister carla wagner on in the morning to discuss uh ask my tax and uh later this week we got we got guests every every day this week we're gonna have uh steve car on actually later on um and try to have him on regularly uh giving us updates as well but man one thing i i wanted to point out is some of these grass rats these so-called grass rats they all of a sudden upset that trump done endorsed all of a sudden mike rogers and uh now they saying now they upset about trump endorsements but they was okay with pete hoekstra being endorsed by trump and it's funny because you know what i'm saying they both swamp creatures but y'all okay with one not the other now they writing letters to trump telling them that this is a horrible endorsement it but, is a horrible endorsement though it is it's oh yeah mistake. oh yeah oh yeah so is hooks both, oh, of them yeah. were. both were bad and you know you want to know something else about that since you're on that take a look at also um porter goss was uh right in there with him porter goss this is why we have problems as patriots why we have problems that those three guys are, are the reason we have all the trouble with our with our patriotism because they follow us they've done any anything but treat us like humans 
like treat us as Americans. They want to say, oh, they're protecting us. No, you're not. You look at the background. These guys have all been connected with this deep state and Who intelligence community. Who was that? Yeah. Porter Goss is the other one. There's three of them. Porter Goss. And Porter Goss wrote a letter uh, uh, of support for Hastert. Why? Because, again, they were all connected. Porter Goss and Denny Hastert was the Speaker of the House. Okay. What was Mike Rogers? He was right there with Pete. And 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 Rogers and Porter Goss and they and we know that Porter Goss wrote a letter. We're looking for the other ones, and I'm telling you, these people are evil, pure evil. Oh, oh yeah, they they assembling the old crew. You old know crew, they absolutely. And we are the Sister targets, unfortunately. Terry, oh yeah, well they know we we assembling we assembling the remnant warriors so they trying to reassemble the old crew but it ain't finna work like it used to because we way more awake and we way more united than we were then you know right. uh mm, mm, mm. yep i see yeah yeah man sister carla we gonna be getting some uh petitions as well got her on the show tomorrow we're gonna be uh doing everything we can to uh, get get more signatures and wake people up to uh, get involved as well that's that's one thing that's real important that we got to figure out we all got to brainstorm ways to reach outside of our echo chamber you know what i'm saying we going we we going and talking to the preaching to the choir all the time you know what i'm saying but we got we got to figure out effective ways also that's one big thing with my channel you know i i i combine it to have it mixed with my uh unashamed warrior for god playlist and segment i bring on people we don't even talk about politics they could be democrats liberals independent uninvolved whatever but we're gonna come on and talk about god and then once they subscribe eventually they're gonna see how the church is supposed to be involved and they might watch this segment watch that segment and learn something that uh that just piqued their interest you know what i'm saying so we we all got to get creative and figure out ways to do that and uh i'm gonna constantly be asking people that i bring on how we can well, let's we make can be sure more effective in that way let's make sure people know how to react and how to take these people on we talk about you know all the stuff going on and a lot of this is as we go forward is we want to be able to show the, people how to how to stop it how to really what is the right way to put an effort and stop them for instance how to stop judge rossi how to really protest against judge rossi using the michigan uh judiciary tenure commission or how about matt DePerno and going after the michigan attorney grievance commission those process laying that out for people so they know understand under how to stop yeah. I get that. I get that. And you, you've been, you a veteran in the game. You've been doing this for, you know, probably over 30 years or something. Right. So a lot of this is second nature, but it's a lot of new people getting involved who, who don't understand none of this stuff. And you know what I'm saying? Right. That, that type Correct. of uh, seasoned language can, can deter it or go over their heads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got, yeah, we want to lay it out for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We yep, want to lay it out gotta, for uh, logic. We want to make it like a recipe. In other words, this is how you do it. Step one, step two, step three, very easily done. Um, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Because, for instance, okay, what do you do when someone writes a bad article about you, like our Reuters did recently? Okay, we attacked. We went right at them. How? We basically called them up and said, look, by Monday, you will have it retracted Monday afternoon. If not, you'll know what, you'll, we will know what you're doing, and you will know what I'm doing. And we got a retraction. Was it good enough? No, it's not. But at the time, it, it's setting the, the, the process in order. In other words, making sure they know that we're watching and that we're going to take action. Those are the kind of steps we want to teach people how to be active and be able to stop some of this bad stuff that's going on. Or like I just laid out those two procedures. And that's really the goal going forward is to do exactly that. For sure, for sure. Well, yeah, while we're on here, I wanted to discuss a couple of the recent things that's been going on. Uh, you know, we got, uh, oh, my bad. Let me see what we got. Screen share. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> I 
got this going on. I'm gonna play this real quick. Now to a developing story that we've been following. Goshen has now filed a lawsuit against Green Charter Township. The company is slated to develop a $2.4 billion electric vehicle battery plant in the area. Goshen served the township Friday afternoon over what the company said is a breach of contract. The township's board was recalled last November over its support of Goshen. The new board now reversing a resolution to support bringing Goshen to the township, and they have pulled its approval of a water expansion to the Goshen site. Wow. Good news. Good news. Well, Goshen. Hold on. Commercial. Yeah, Goshen trying to sue uh, Green Township now because they uh, retracted all the things that the previous board did. But it's going to be a war. Obviously, they love to use lawfare. They think because they got all the money in the world. Yep. Well, you realize battery, battery cars are are not selling. Battery cars are not selling. In fact, right. one of the leading one, uh, Fiskers, is actually going to go bankrupt. There was an announcement last week about Fiskers when Upstart was going to you know, make electric cars, but they're going to file bankruptcy. The other thing is the head of Hertz said down, why? Because all those electric cars they had, I think it was like 100,000 of them. Guess what? The battery replacements on them is going to st- going to stick them with big time costs, and so the Hertz, the um, CEO of Hertz stepped down. That's telling you something, folks. It's telling you really? now. All of a sudden, General Motors' focus is now on hybrids, not sole battery. Why? Because they can't sustain this environment. They cannot operate long term in this environment because it's too costly. It doesn't work. Think about your own yard and having battery battery um tools well guess what they run down you got to have an extra set of batteries well you're going to do that with your car when it costs you twenty thousand dollars for a battery 15 to twenty thousand dollars for a battery pack i don't think so you can't afford that right yeah and so if that's you look the- on, if you look on tiktok or on social media it's a lot of people posting videos about how they stuck at the uh charging stations or is winter time and they ain't getting a lot of juice it's, it's charging yeah. super slow way slower than it's supposed to or in the summer so it's big people are problems it's all part of that if you like if you ask me it's part of that uh green energy that climate change all that it's, it's all tied into that which is which is a big scheme in my opinion it exactly correct exactly correct and the governor wants to take and she wants to shut down the coal fire plant like down at Campbell. Let me tell you that down in Ottawa County. Show me why, because I'm going to tell you the output of that. Parts per trillion? I don't think so. I think they're a lot better than that. The whole point is that it doesn't meet their agenda. Where are you going to go on that case in this green energy? Where are they going to get the extra uh, electricity from? Where is that going to get off the grid? They're going to buy it out of state. You're going to pay more. Okay, and you're going to get what for it? Nothing. You're losing jobs over that as well. So loss of revenue to the local communities. You're getting nothing benefit. So what what the heck are we doing, folks? Where is the where is the logic? Where's the reason? Get it? Speaking of Gretchen Whitmer, (laughs) she just did a speech the other day. She uh, talking about see see them at 2029. I'm was that when she was say, over in uh, Taiwan? She opened an office in Taiwan, <laughs> right? The, yeah. There, this was in Washington, uh, I think, not too long ago. During a speech Saturday night in front of hundreds of politicians and Washington media members, Governor Gretchen she's running Whitmer. For, she's running, yeah. Joe. Yeah. She's running with Joe. Whitmer. Yeah. Whitmer was once a hand of a handful of speakers at the annual Gridiron Club and Foundation Dinner, where she poked fun at herself and other politicians while also speaking about the seriousness of upcoming elections. With with President Joe Biden, blah, blah, blah. She said, with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris in the room, Whitmer concluded her speech with a very simple 
and not too subtle closing line punctuated by a wink. See you in 2029, she said. No, oh, she's running. She's running. Watch for We've her. been exposing she's... her for, uh, yeah. We've been exposing her for a while. We're going to keep exposing her, but man, she, yep. she, she know not to try this year because there's too much on her, too much heat on her already. All right, last thing I'd like to cover before we get off because I got to leave at 7 30 is, um, Talking about Kalamazoo and the fighters down there, we heard from them on Saturday. And let me tell you what, those, they, those are real fighters. We have, have we have the real group down there with Sabrina Pritchett-Evans and Kim Harris and uh, Ken Beyer. I want to tell you, those guys are formidable foes. I'll go to them with battle any time because I'll tell you right now, their heart and their soul is in the right place. And when we talk about what we're doing, we always got to remember – about what heart is. And in the Bible, it, it's listed in the King James Bible over 826 times. In other Bibles, it's over a 1,000. So it is focused on the heart. And those people have heart down in Kalamazoo. They battle. They've been battling the guy like the DePerno. DePerno, I, I got to tell you right now, um, the guy is evil. And the next trial they have, I'm going to show up there. I have told them I want to know the date so I can be there. I already got a beef against DePerno. There's no doubt about it. And I want to file that that uh, felony charge against him because that guy, he, he's been been riding roughshod over people as a bully. Make no mistake, the guy is a bully or tries to be. But the attorney general is DePerno taking him to switched, task. He flipped up like he flipped up like night and day because man, he used yep. to in the beginning of his campaign, he was a total different yep. person than he yep. was at, as now for sure. I ain't sure, talked to him not sure. lately or nothing. He he is he's bad news. And I want to tell you, anybody that goes and sides as attorney general candidate, then goes and sides with a guy like Stan Grot, who accepted that bribe. Right. Tell me how what kind of message that sent to people. It sent and then all way. these then you got all these paid operatives in the grassroots and all these yeah. grass rats. Acting Grass like rat. none of this That's stuff, right. acting like Stan Grant is okay, acting like Ron Weiser is okay now, acting like Pete yeah. Hoekstra is okay now, and then y'all got the nerve to get mad at Mike Rogers. Man, y'all yeah. whacked out. Yeah. We got a couple of them in the comment section. I'm glad y'all watching because I pray for y'all, you know what I'm saying, because y'all y'all is there either misled or y'all have sold y'all soul, but that's for you and God to figure out. But anyway. Thank you for that right. Yes, sir. Anyway, Sabrina Pritchard Evans, I'm gonna try to get her on the show because I already Here know on. Kim Byer. Yeah. He, he a warrior. Yeah. We're gonna be bringing get people on regularly. Huh? Get, get Kim Harris on because Kim has got a great story as well. Both both those ladies do, and Ken Byer. They all have the stories, and I think another one to get is Dan Bonamy. Uh, get Dan on. Dan is a in the Northern Michigan side, and I'm gonna tell you right now, he's a refreshing guy to have on. You will love him. You know, and yeah. I, I think we have the Warriors. We have the base. Now it's all upon all of us to expand that base. We need to oh, get yeah. five people, five people, each of us, that's compounding interest and get them on charge, get them charged. The first thing we have to do, though, is make sure we get delegates signed up. Why? They're going to work to reduce the number of delegates. This is how they control this whole formula. They're going to look at reducing them on each county. But they have to, whatever formula they use, they're going to have to apply it equal to every precinct. So we want to make sure that we look at who's doing it. The chair of that, of that, of the party, of the county party is the one that does it. We want to make sure we keep them honest. And if they aren't doing it honestly, vote them out. It's that simple. Vote them out. Do not let your chair pull this game that they're pulling because that's what rhinos do. That is exactly what rhinos do. Make no mistake about it. So I'm going to have to wrap it up here, uh, Logic. I appreciate you having me on All right. tonight. And as All right, always, brother. It's logic and reason and the truth in black and white. Till next Alrighty. time. Peace. Thank you. Happy. All right. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Brother Chuck Richard, he got a lot of enemies out here, and they're the right enemies. And, you know, I'm glad it's a couple of y'all watching because I'm rebuilding my channel. And you know what I'm saying? It, it was growing exponentially before they deleted it. And uh, it's going to go again. And, you know, we fighting back. It's a war. You know what I'm saying? 
it's it's the warriors for God against the warriors for the kingdom of darkness, and they know who who they are. You know what I'm saying? So God bless all the true warriors and soldiers out there. You know what I'm saying? Sister Carla Wagner for Ask My Tax. Keep fighting. We we behind you. We going to help y'all, continue to help y'all get as many signatures as y'all need. You know what I'm saying? Steve Cara facing heat from the grass rats, the uh, paid operatives, the little minions. You know what I'm saying? They got their little telegram and chat groups. And, uh, you know, they upset at Steve now. Anybody who stands for the righteousness and try to do the right thing is a target in their eyes. And that's not new. You know what I'm saying? The kingdom of darkness is up against the kingdom of light. And uh, it's a milit it's a war, a spiritual war. It's been going on for a long time. And uh, it's going to continue to go until the Lord, until the Lord put an end to it all. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, you know, we covered most of the things I wanted to oh, I also wanted to talk about a little Jocelyn Benson. A little Jocelyn Benson out here. You know, we gotta keep our eye on these people because uh she didn't testify before the Senate. She up there lying. I had a clip I wanted to play. But I don't even want to. It's hard to even hear these people's voices, man. I read a little bit of it. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson testified before a U.S. Senate committee last week advocating for increased election security ahead of the 2024 contest. Wow. Now she won. Now she acting like she won more security. Benson spoke before the Senate Rules Committee last week with four other election officials from across the country in a hearing on the administration of upcoming elect elections. Michigan's top election officials said the last few years have provided many reasons for optimism for the strength of the democratic process, a rise in voter turnout in 2020 and 2022, and the expansion of voting options with the implementation of early in-person voting and permanent absentee voter rolls. Mm -mm. Benson stressed that the 2024 election cycle has the potential for new types of attacks on the legitimacy, on the legitimacy of our country's institutions. Man, see y'all see why I didn't even want to read that. So we got to keep our eyes on her. She also, uh, they just certified this year's primary. So I guess that went all right. And uh, we're going to keep our eyes on her. Like I say, the new website is up. Thank you, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Thank you to each and every one of y'all for tuning back in once again for another episode of Logic's View. I got tons and tons of guests. I got tons and tons of new things going on behind the scenes. I appreciate each one of y'all starting, standing with me as we begin to rebuild. And I got a lot of, lot of uh, connections up my sleeve that's going to really help us take it to a next level. So, uh, and y'all stay strong out here. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, we doing our best. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us young patriots, you know what I'm saying? We got young children, we working, we praying, we going to church, we going to sports, we trying to do this and that. On top of that, we got to fight and the politics. So it's war. I, uh, You know what I'm saying? Keep everybody in your circle lifted up. Keep God first. And we out here. Thank y'all. God bless. Peace.